I'm Alexa and I'm going to be showing you how to create middleware functions in Next.js. Middleware in Next.js is implemented a bit differently than in other frameworks like Express, which is why I think it deserves its own video. So just to explain what middleware is, it's just functions that run in between the request and the response. And these functions will have access to the request and the response objects, just like how in our next API handler right here, this function has access to these same objects. And basically what middleware does, it can either change, redirect, or even end an HTTP request. So if a user needs to be authenticated before accessing an endpoint, we won't let the user even get to that endpoint because the request will come in, it'll go to our middleware first, and our middleware will check if the user is authenticated or not. And if they're not, they're gonna simply end the request or redirect them to like the login screen. Middleware can also be chained together so you can have multiple middleware functions running on a single route or before a single route. Next.js middleware is a bit special because it runs on the edge. And this means that the middleware functions are deployed on multiple servers across the globe it makes it really fast. So if a user makes a request, the edge function is gonna run on a server that's closest to them geographically. So yes, this creates really fast responses, but it also comes with limitations, which we're gonna demonstrate in this video as well. The first thing to do to get started with middleware in Next.js is to create a middleware.js file at the same level as your pages directory. So um, no underscore, anything like that. I'm pretty sure this is the next 13. You need to do this. Just call it middleware.js. For me, I'm gonna create it in the source because that's where my pages folder is. So I'm gonna create a new file called middleware.js. What we wanna do here is export a function called middleware from this file. So we can say export, function middleware and then we pass in a, a request. How do we get a response? How do we actually return something from the middleware or allow the request to go onto the endpoint if a user has um, passed this middleware function? We actually need to import next response because we don't have access to the response object in this function alone. So we need to say import next response from next server. That's going to give us a response object. And then inside of here, I'm just going to create a simple middleware that just prints hello from middleware to the console. And the thing with middleware is after you run the function, you want to return the next thing to do. So middleware can be chained together, which is why this is important. And also, um, so we actually let the request go to the endpoint. So let's say return next response dot next. This is a static method on the this next response. So let's save this and um, run it. Now, if we go to our browser, we can see here I have localhost 3000 pulled up and it's just at the home page. And notice in our terminal or our console, we have hello from middleware printed a bunch of times. So um, that's probably me just reloading the page, but if we reload, reload it again, um, we should have gotten another console log. Notice this is going to run on every single route we type into here. So if I do slash API slash hello, we're still gonna get a hello from middleware. And that's because as a default, Next.js middleware runs on every route. But let's say we wanted to change that. We wanted to match a middleware function to a specific URL. So maybe we only wanna have the middleware run on our API routes. What we can do, one of two things we can do, is use this config constant that we export from this middleware file. So we can say export const config, and then it's just an object. And inside of here, we can have this key called matcher. And what we do with this is we essentially put in a string 
or um, a regex expression, something like that. You can look up the documentation on that, but this string here is gonna match all of our API routes. So it'll be slash API and then path and then asterisk. That's just gonna match everything after this slash, it'll match because it doesn't care. We just want all the routes that prefix with API. So if we do that, say hello from API now, if we go back to our app and reload this, we're gonna see hello from API because we are in fact on an API route. But if we go to the root, hopefully we won't get that running and we don't. So that's, how you, that's one way to do it. Another way to do it is to use um, if statements and that would be in the actual middleware function itself. So I'm just going to comment this out and in here I can say if the request, so we have access to this object, we can get the URL path name, all that stuff. So the way we get the path name is by doing URL dot path name. And then we just check if it's equal to like slash API, or we can say dot starts with slash API. I'm just gonna say slash API slash hello. This is for only the hello route. And what we can do here is just put our code inside here. And we still wanna keep that return at the bottom. Reloading the page here, nothing is printed. But if we do go to that API endpoint, we should see something printed and we do. Okay, so I'm gonna show you some code that would actually be useful in a middleware function, not just console logging. But basically this middleware function is gonna check if the request method is a certain method. So let's say post. And if it's not that method, we wanna return an error and end that request. Inside of here, we access the rec dot method and we say, if the request method is not post, we're gonna return a new next response. Basically what you pass in here is like the message you wanna send. You can also send JSON, which is really helpful. And this is just passing in like the options. So we can set a status to 400, which is like bad request. So actually I'll just change this to like, hello. So if we do that, Go back here, reload this page. We're gonna see, cannot access this endpoint with a get. So that's really cool. Our middleware doesn't even allow us to actually get to this endpoint. It just sends back a response immediately. So that's really nice. You can also put this in its own function and import it into this file and use it there. Now let's switch gears here and talk about the edge, as I mentioned earlier. So Next.js middleware, runs on these edge functions. And to my knowledge, you cannot disable this feature. And the edge runtime is sort of its own thing. So this is actually the docs for the edge runtime. It's not the same as a Node.js runtime. It's its own type of runtime. So it's you're not gonna have access to some of the things that Node.js has. One thing in particular, you're not gonna have access to a lot of NPM packages. I learned this the hard way when trying to implement authentication with Next.js middleware. So this is the stuff that's inside the edge runtime. And this is what you can use. But NPM packages, um, file stuff, you can't really access within the edge runtime. So that means you can't have any of that stuff inside of your middleware functions or it's gonna throw an error. If you try to import JSON web token into this file and use it in this middleware function, it's not gonna work. And there's a few ways to get around this. One, you can use a package that's actually supported in the Edge runtime. There is actually a JWT package that is supported in the Edge runtime, so you can find those, or you're gonna have to put your logic in another endpoint and actually call that endpoint from the middleware. That's really not the ideal option from my understanding because you have to make an additional request to even let the user access the original endpoint they wanted to access. So to wrap this video up, I'm gonna show you one more thing you can use in middleware. It's called the next fetch event. It allows you to fetch stuff in your middleware function 
and then wait for it to come back and then proceed with your other things. So this could be used in like authentication if you're making a request to your auth server and you wanna wait, or also it could be a request to your own API. So here's the code for that. Okay, here I added default here, but I'm pretty sure it doesn't matter. So we pass in a request and event is another thing that the middleware function comes with. This is of type next fetch event, if you're curious. But basically what you can do here is say um, event dot wait until, and this is going to wait until your fetch response like comes back. So right now I'm just fetching my own API. So the hello API route here. And this is a get request. And then I just do stuff with the response, turn it into JSON and then console log it. So if this works correctly, I should see the response in my console here. So if I press enter here, we get that. And then we should also see it inside of here. So now we have access to this response object inside of our middleware. So like we can check if the name is John or if it's some, something else and change or redirect the response based on that. So I hope you found this video helpful. Again, I'm not an expert on this and I ran into a lot of problems with Next.js middleware with like the edge functions and stuff like that. So if I'm wrong with something, please let me know in the comments, but hopefully this helped you and thanks for watching. Please leave a like, subscribe, all that. See you in the next video.